When you're evaluating how well an AC condenser is rejecting heat, there are two common measurements technicians rely on, the air side delta T across the condenser coil and the saturated condensing temperature, or SCT, taken from the refrigerant pressure temperature chart. Both are valid diagnostic tools and both give you valuable information, but they measure very different things. And because of that, many techs confuse the two, or they try to use one method to answer questions that belong to the other. So in today's video, I'll walk you through exactly what each measurement tells you, how to perform both correctly, and when to use each one. By the end, you'll be able to combine these two methods to get a complete and accurate picture of condenser performance, refrigerant charge, and heat rejection. Two techs walk up to the same condenser. One pulls out an infrared gun and shoots the air coming out the top. The other hooks up gauges and looks at a pressure chart. They walk away with completely different stories about what's wrong with the unit, and only one of them is right. Today, we're settling the argument once and for all. Air temperature rise versus real condenser temperature difference. Air delta T versus real condenser temperature difference. Which one actually tells you what's wrong? Section 1. The two methods. Let's define the two numbers everybody argues about. What is condenser air side delta T? Method number one, air side delta T, the quick and dirty one. Let's start with the air side delta T. Condenser delta T is the temperature difference between the air entering the condenser and the air leaving the top of the condenser as the fan blows it out. You stick a thermometer in the ambient air going into the coil, then stick it in the hot air blowing out the top. If the air entering the condenser is 90 degrees Fahrenheit and the air leaving the top of the unit is 110 degrees Fahrenheit, then your delta T is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Subtract. Leaving air minus entering air. Most residential units equals 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit rise. Takes 30 seconds. Zero tools except a thermometer. This measurement tells you how much heat the condenser is rejecting into the atmosphere. It's an airflow and heat rejection performance measurement, not a refrigerant side measurement. Method number two, real condenser, TD, the doctor's thermometer. What is SCT, saturated condensing temperature? SCT is determined by reading the high side pressure on your gauge manifold and then converting that pressure to a temperature using the refrigerant's PT chart. You hook up your high side gauge, Read the pressure, convert that pressure to saturated condensing temperature using a PT chart or app, then subtract the entering ambient air temperature. SCT minus ambient equals condenser temperature difference TD. Typical numbers, 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit on standard units, 15 to 22 degrees Fahrenheit on high efficiency stuff. Takes two to three minutes and a set of gauges. T tells you the refrigerant's saturation temperature inside the condenser coil. It's a refrigerant thermodynamics measurement, not an airflow measurement. So one is fast, one takes a little effort. Which one do you trust? Section two, what each one is actually good for. This is where many technicians run into trouble. They try to use the SCT number to estimate air side delta T. But SCT is always higher than the air discharge temperature because the refrigerant is hotter than the air being blown off the unit. The two measurements are related but they're not interchangeable, and substituting one for the other will lead to incorrect conclusions about airflow, coil cleanliness, or charge. Airside delta T doesn't equal SCT. They are two different measurements serving two different diagnostic purposes. Air delta T is great for two things. Gross airflow problems. If the air rises 12 degrees Fahrenheit or less, the fan is barely moving air. Dead motor, broken blade, something dramatic. Quick sanity check that the system is doing something. If the discharge air is cool on a 95 degrees Fahrenheit day, you instantly know the compressor isn't running or you're critically low on charge. That's it. Anything more subtle and air delta T lies to you. Real condenser TD tells you the actual health of the high side. Dirty or blocked condenser coil. Overcharge, undercharge. Non-condensables. Recirculation. Wrong fan speed on a variable speed unit. Whether a high-efficiency unit with a big coil is running at its designed 15 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit temperature difference. Comparing system operation to manufacturer data. 
Air Delta T can't see any of that reliably because coil design, fan speed, and airflow change the air rise even when the refrigerant temperature is perfect. Section 3. Side-by-side -side Demo Watch this. First, the quick method. Ambient entering air equals 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Discharge air off the top equals 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Air Delta T equals 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Most techs say, looks good, and leave. Now the real method. High side pressure equals 505 PSIG. R410A pressure, temperature chart. Saturated condensing temperature equals 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Condenser temperature difference equals 135 minus 94 equals 41 degrees Fahrenheit. The coil is dirty or airflow is low. I clean the condenser coil removing the dirt and debris and had the owner agree to cut back some shrubs suffocating air to the inlet of the condenser. The head pressure falls 110 PSI from 505 to 395 and our Delta T numbers begin to look better. The customer's bill drops 15% and the compressor thanks us. Air DT barely moved, but the system was screaming. Section 4. When to use which. Here's the rule I teach every tech on my crew. First 60 seconds at the condenser, always measure air delta T. It's so fast. If it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Fahrenheit, you instantly know you have a big problem. If air delta T is in the normal 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit zone, stop right there and hook up gauges. Take the two extra minutes and calculate real condenser temperature difference. That's the only way to separate dirty coil from overcharge from non-condensables from wrong ECM speed. Use the quick method as a screening tool. Use the real method to write the prescription. Stop feeling the forehead with an infrared gun and telling the customer their system is fine. Take the real temperature. Air Delta T is a clue. Condenser Delta T is the diagnosis. Both airside delta T and SCT are essential diagnostic tools. They measure different things, but together they give you the complete story of how well a condenser is performing, not just on the refrigerant side, but on the airflow and heat rejection side as well. If you start using both measurements on every service call, your diagnostic accuracy goes way up and your callbacks go way down. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our HVAC and plumbing estimating spreadsheets to streamline your construction bidding process. Check out our HVAC, electrical, and plumbing construction forms to help you run your business and explore our online courses for in-depth training.